Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I'm using Reddit for the first time, and English isn't my first language, so please be kind with me. I'm a 28-year-old woman, and I'm getting married to my fiancé this December. Due to COVID restrictions, we aren't able to invite as many people as we usually would like to. And in our culture, we just happen to have more family members in general. So it's a mess all over to handle so many things without hurting anyone in any way. Me and my immediate family have always been a little scattered in general. My dad was always busy with work and didn't really seem to have any attachment to any of us. My mother passed away while giving birth to me. So that was the main reason he couldn't stand my existence in the first place and about my stepmother. She has always been a mother to me and has never shown any evil stepmother antics or behavior towards me. My father and her had a son together who is right now in senior year of high school. I never lived with them. My dad just couldn't afford to keep me near him. I looked rather like my mother and he hates this fact. And no matter what he does, he just never trusted me or loved me in any way. As I didn't want to be a burden, I asked to be sent to Korea to live with my aunt and uncle and stayed there until college and returned to the U.S. to pursue computer science at Yale. During this period of time, we never really lived together. He would try his best to ignore me, and whenever I approached him to talk, he would just say that he has a lot of work and, you know, get over it. My stepmother and stepbrother have always tried to get things solved, but nothing changes. That man has completely closed himself off from any emotional connection. My mother's death has deeply affected him. Everyone during family gatherings always pointed out how much he has changed since, and now it's been 28 years and he still refuses to move on and actually focus on bonds that are going to save him in his old age. As I said at the beginning, I was getting married to my fiancé soon enough, so we shortlisted the names of guests and sent all the invitations out. I made sure to invite my mom's brother to her side of the family, even though I have no attachment or connection to them. My dad and uncle used to be high school buddies and were so close friends that they were never seen anywhere without each other, and my mom occasionally joined them in their playtime, and that's how they fell in love with each other and decided to always be close to each other, but God had his own plans. After getting married, I will permanently shift to China, where my husband is from. I will probably see my family again after at least four to five years, so I made sure to spend a lot of time with each of them. With my father, my contacts will be minimal, just me having open-sided conversations because he never really takes mind in talking to me. So to give things a last chance, I asked him to walk me down the aisle, as he's supposed to do. First, the reaction to this question was him trying to avoid this whole conversation and stealing glances. Then he goes on telling me how much I look like my mother, how I have her eyes and face, but also am kind like her. It was emotional for us, and he started talking about how she would have ex been excited to see me get married and how much extra she would have planned and how this whole me getting married would have made more sense and how he would have actually enjoyed this whole farce. Tears were already starting to gather in my eyes at this point. He then continued how he was never excited to have me, how my mother's stubbornness to give birth to me only is the reason she passed away. Everything that would hurt me was being said to me, and when we were talking, my uncle stepped in and asks him why was he saying such things to me. He said he just wanted me to know how I ruined his life and took everything from him for my own selfish reason to be born. It was all a little too dramatic and crossed all the limits of saying bad things to someone that day. I picked myself up, but inside I literally wanted to be dead like my mother. I gathered all the strength I had and told my father to leave the wedding immediately and never show his face again or keep any contact with me. He didn't really say anything, just packed his things and went away. My wedding is in a week and I don't have my immediate family around me, but it's better than all the humiliation that I had to stand when I didn't do anything wrong. It's his fault for not getting any help or being grown enough to manage his own grief and emotions. Thank you to everyone uh, for appreciating my English. 
I studied it but never felt confident enough and white people just always keep on correcting you. I got married to my fiancé and now I can call him my husband. My stepmother and brother both were present and my uncle walked me down the aisle. He has the same vibe as my mother and he treats me like his own daughter, so through him I got the blessings of my mother and father. It's a little emotional and makes me tear up a bit. My husband cried while seeing me walk down the aisle. It was like a straight out of drama kind of moment and we all celebrated till late night and had a blast while dancing and eating and doing all sorts of stuff. My father didn't show up but my stepmother gave me a gift, a hairpin that belonged to my mother. She told me to keep it a secret. Me and her spoke about my father's situation and how bad she felt about it and talked about our other personal stuff before the wedding. She's really kind. My father has disappeared somewhere and it's actually quite normal for him to do that. I'm surprised that my stepmommy didn't dump him and had the strength to put up with him. We clicked pictures, she didn't let me miss my mom a lot and tried her best to be kind to me and everything went well. Now I am on my honeymoon and will directly move to China and start a new life and I have decided to go for therapy and completely move past from this toxic life and the people in it. So it's been at least six months now since then. I have completely settled down in China. I love this place and its people, and most importantly, the food. Yes, I do have a job here, and as my husband is a local here, so we are really well settled. I really love my life here, and I'm glad that I'm here. I'm in contact with my uncle and my stepmother. My stepbrother is already in college, and he goes to Harvard and I'm really proud of him. He's also doing well in sports. It may take him somewhere. I have never bothered with my dad after that, and I don't know what's up with him. But from what I've heard from my mom, he is the same as ever. I'm okay with him, and I don't really care about all that shit. Nothing much has changed since then, I guess, but yeah, we're all doing good if anyone wants to check up on us. It's been a whole year since then, actually more than that. I guess, and it's an update that you all have been waiting for. My father reached out to me. It actually happened two months ago, and finally, he woke up from whatever crap he had always put inside his head. And finally, he is at least trying to change. It took him at least 29 years of life to finally see eye to eye with me. Let me give you all the details properly. So, Around October, I received a call from an international number, and every time I would pick up, there would be no answer from the other side, just silence. At first, I didn't understand what was going on, and then my stepmother called me and said how my father is trying to reach out to me. At first, I made it clear I had no interest in making things up with him. She begged for a chance, and I said I would talk to him and make him realize that he doesn't deserve any second chances after a million chances given to him. So we spoke and he wanted to come over once to talk once and my mother was coming along so I was fine with it. They were over at our house like a month ago. He explained everything to me and we talked and talked and talked till every complaint in our hearts were cleared out. I understand him and his reasoning and he is getting help too. Moreover, for the very first time in his life he's trying and I think he deserves a chance. I haven't forgiven him or, as we both know deep down, Things will never be normal. Just ignoring each other during gatherings would finally change. My husband is happy too and I've gotten closer to my uncle since the past three months. We talk often and FaceTime. Everything has been going pretty good and things are just slowly improving. OP, cut your father off. I know this sounds harsh, but he is not a good person to be around with. He is literally in denial of the whole thing and you don't deserve a father like that. He doesn't deserve to experience something as staying in your life and being a part of the key moments, let alone walking you down the aisle. Look, I know you want to fill the void, but this is just going to hurt you more and more with no end to it. That guy couldn't change in 29 years. He will never change either. And honestly, there's no guarantee of it anyways. Please take my advice and cut him off. You don't need him. And if he thinks it's easy to show up one day and act all nice is going to work out, He's got it all wrong. As a girl, I can understand the whole deal with absent fathers. Like, honestly, he doesn't deserve the forgiveness, but I know how the little girl inside you would be wanting to have your dad with you. It's a hard and careful decision to make, 
But be careful of everything he does and watch his every move. Next story. First of all, I, a woman, was pregnant and gave birth two days ago. Our first child was from my wife's pregnancy. And we decided that this time it would be me who would give birth to our daughter. My wife had a natural home and humanized birth. It was a unique but extremely terrifying moment. I was in doubt about which birth I would like to have because I was very afraid of the natural and of the pain, labor, but my wife encouraged me and said that it was a unique moment, without demeaning cesarean mothers, and that it was worth every second, so I decided to have a natural and humanized but hospital birth. When my water broke, I went to the hospital out of encouragement. She didn't push or stay on top. I decided to go ahead without anesthesia. Do you know hell? I played rock, paper, scissors and lost best of three with the devil and came back. It was a lot of pain and the expulsion phase, oh my God, I just followed it because I hate needles and it's enough at the end. I didn't want a needle in the back. Trying to justify it, I would have a panic attack at the beginning if I asked for anesthesia, but it would be at the beginning. But in the end, with a panic attack, it is not possible. My wife was wonderful, honestly, but due to the stress of childbirth and the pain, she was irritating me a lot, saying, Go strong, OP. Go on, you're strong. Just a little longer. And when she said, Can you take a little more pushing? I just said, Shut up. I'm just like this because you decorated and flowered this birth for me. I was screaming and crying. She went quiet, and our daughter was born after a while. I honestly forgot I said that. It was really a moment and in a lot of pain. But I noticed that she was weird with me after we went to the house. After one day of silent treatment, I asked her why she was like this, and she got mad, saying, Don't you know? You told me to shut up at the birth of our daughter. I was so embarrassed and almost ruined the moment. I even apologized and explained that it was purely for the moment, but she is super upset with me. A-I-T-A? N-T-A, she's talking about you ruining her moment? Is she serious? How utterly selfish of her to make that moment all about her and her experience. You're the one going through a major medical moment. I've had three births and I'm about to have my fourth. My husband is 110% aware how major this is, and while I've always been excited for his experience in meeting our child, the birthing part is all mine, and however I need to be supported is what's going to happen. In immense pain, you told her what you needed, and instead of adjusting to be more helpful, she took offense and made it about her. NTA, your wife encouraged you towards natural birth, despite your terror. She sounds controlling and manipulative. When you struggled to cope, she was patronizing. And now, she has the audacity to be sulking over being told to shut up over it? When you just gave birth? I tell her to F off, with her selfish, controlling attitude. A day's silent treatment over this after childbirth is borderline abusive, IMO. You almost ruining the moment is something a very stupid dad might say because he has never had to give birth himself. Your wife has no such excuse. She sounds horrible. Next story. I'm a 27-year-old man. My sister-in-law's husband, 31, is a piece of work. He's a bit of a braggart and gets off on boasting about his money and the things he's bought with said money. Me and my wife aren't exactly struggling, but we're not as well off as them. Every time we visit them, he'll pull me aside to show off whatever new gadget he bought. Whenever we go out to dinner with them, he'll insist on paying in the most condescending way possible. He'll also try to give me financial advice, which is just annoying. My wife doesn't like him, but she puts up with it since she's very close to her sister. I'm kind of close to my wife, so I put up with it for her. So he got into crypto a year ago, and shortly after NFTs. I work in finance, and I've learned a decent amount about crypto. I'm not some expert, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see how it's a Ponzi scheme. 
When he brought me this advice, we argued on it. He accused me of not wanting to give my wife the life she deserves. He also said that he was going to make his family millionaires and called me naive for not wanting to join in. I don't know if y'all have been watching the news lately, but a lot of cryptos aren't doing so hot. We hosted them for dinner last night. It was awkward. There was some tension there, but I really couldn't tell why. In a period of silence, I asked him, So, y'all millionaires yet? At that point, my wife's sister put her head down into her hands and was in tears in seconds. Her husband explained he bet money that they couldn't afford on various cryptos that crashed. He lost a shit ton of money and said, unless they figure something out, they won't be able to stay in their house or pay for their two daughters' preschool. I was immediately met with a glare from him and my wife. I felt bad, but I honestly didn't know and wouldn't have mocked him. I knew he lost money, but I didn't know he was going to lose that much. When they left, my wife accused me of being in a dick measuring cons test against him and said I took it too far. I tried to argue that he started it and she told me I was being a child. A-I-T-A? Unpopular opinion, apparently, but why T-A? There is absolutely no way you didn't know that they had lost money. You said it yourself. You work in finance and you know what's going on with crypto right now. You knew exactly what you were doing when you asked that question and don't even try to deny it. You wanted to rub it in their faces that crypto wasn't a good investment for them and that you were right and they were wrong. So are you all millionaires yet? Are you serious? That's a, such a shit thing to say considering the circumstances. Even if it was meant as a joke, it was in a horrible, poor taste. How else did you think this conversation would go? Oh yes, despite the major dip crypto has recently taken, we've managed to miraculously become millionaires. Screw off with your I didn't know BS. You knew they lost. You just didn't know by how much. And trying to justify yourself by saying, Oh, he's a braggart, and he started it, isn't going to work. Was finance even the topic of conversation? Because it sounds like you just said this out of nowhere. This isn't something you make fun of, and this isn't something you bring up at a dinner with friends. You just wanted the satisfaction of hearing that you were right. Who cares about your friends lost tons of money, right? YTA, and your wife is right, you were being a child.